Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is my unboxing and rambling of Townsville Tussle uh, for the second time. For the second time. I've unboxed this one before, the original prototype back when I got it, and this is me diving into it for the second time, which is not something I typically would do, except for a few different things. One is I'm tired and not feeling well, and I like doing these unboxing and ramblings when I'm tired and not feeling well. We'll get to that soon enough as to why. Don't worry, it's good. But people who are like, like, oh no, Alex, you know, relax and don't overwork yourself. This is this is fun for me. Also, coffee shot while I take a sip, because if I'm tired, I want coffee. Number two is the last time I did this, I did not have a nice setup for my unboxings at all, and so this is hopefully better than that, so I can justify it that way. And number three, the last time I did it, there were not miniatures in the box. In general, if I ever do unboxings, I'll only ever do a second unboxing when there's a lot more things to show. Like, if I do an unboxing of a prototype and the final game isn't that much different, I'm not going to do that much different. Versus if there's an all-in or something else, then hey, it's another opportunity to hop down for a conversation. Plus, the inherent nature of anything, really, it's something I have to frequently remind myself, as I mute my phone, give me one second here, it's something I frequently have to remind myself is that I kind of view everything as a bit of a hey, I filmed this so people have seen it, but the reality is uh, people watching come and go, people watching change, things change over time, and the people watching today may not be the people watching in a year and a half. They'll really overlap, but not everyone, and so there's always really a reason to repeat the content. Now, one thing that I've struggled with is the idea that there are videos I will want to redo, conversations I'll want to have, always with a different spin on them, but in some degree covering the same topics. You know, how to deal with FOMO, how to keep a reasonable collection, how to get rid of your games. These are all conversations I'll want to have more than once. And I will. Slightly different twists on them every single time, slightly different adjustments, because there will be... I don't want to repeat the exact same content for those who are not new, who are uh, who have been around for a while, but I want to have the conversations again for those who are, well, new. So, my assumption is this will go down, you can see over here on the front camera, my assumption is this will go down level. Once we go through it, I'll take that these out, and we'll go through these last, because why wouldn't we? But once we go through all this stuff over here, we should be fine to go. So, Townsville Tussle. This is a prototype I covered back in the day. This thing is currently hot. If you ever caught your Townsville Tussle and you want to sell for more than you paid for it, you can do so. So, let's go ahead. We have page three starting us off. We have components. I like going through the general... Let me push this up a bit. I like going through the general, uh, you know, what's included in the rulebook. We have... And I've, I've read through this, and it looks like it kept most of the same formatting. I'm sure there are differences... But we have, uh, let's see, we have the Blossy Twins over here, we have page 7, we have Choosing a Townsfolk, we have Gear, so it kind of does start already on page, I would say, 6 with Setup and Preparation, all the way through, and remember this is really easy to go through, uh, page 6 to 2, Townsfolk turn, the final fight, you can already see the final fight, you don't even need the final fight, 6 to 20 is pretty much your rule, 6 to 20. The final fight is once you have, uh, Townsville Tussle played over a series of four different fights against a escalating more difficult boss battler. Each each boss you choose can be scaled up to different difficulty levels, giving you a different challenge every single time based on the order, the people, all that stuff. There's all this slight narrative or small changes, not a ton going on here. And then we have the graveyard. We bow our heads to those who have perished in the dastardly rough and attacks. Take a moment to absorb their last words and final moment. So, we have Quacklub over here. I know he went for that. Uh, suffering Sakatosh, Radcliffe will pay... <laughs> I didn't know that was in there. Suffering Sakatosh, Radcliffe will pay for this. So apparently Quacklip decided to uh, put me in his testimonial, his little gravestone thing. I don't believe I did this, if I recall correctly. Uh, this is basically if you paid a little more, you can get your yourself permanently inscribed on a gravestone. Oh, that is delightful. That is delightful. And so we have you in the rule book with that. And then we also have, if you look on the sides of the boxes over here, you can see different names. In fact, I can see, let me go ahead and show you this on the top camera. I can see over here, we have a little quack right there. Okay, so quack's right over there on the side of the box. That is going to be quack lope. Sitting there with little horns on his tombstone. That's amusing. So, what is this over here? This is property of Bort D. Things to do. Oh, this is a map. This is the map of Eureka. Eureka Springs, I believe it's called. Is it called Eureka Springs, or is that some something else? I believe it's Eureka Springs. I'm trying to remember. We have Townsville Tussle. Eureka Springs. Say it's the end show. The sheriff of Eureka Springs has been murdered. Okay. So these are the rules, the stuff over there. We have our punch board. So going back to, well, let's, let's talk about the Townsville Tussle. Uh, in general, I tell you this in general, but unboxing and rambling means I will be all over the place. I'll talk about the game, but I will talk about other things as well. Ooh, these are nice. Holy smoly, I like these. What are these? Okay, well, I don't like the fact they don't come out easily. That's not great. Okay, so the question is, how do these come out? Oh, they, that comes out easily, never mind. Okay, I try to pick up a big box over there. This is the big box, but... That is going to be slightly annoying to get all this out over here. Slightly. Not the worst, but not the best. We have cards, cards, and more. 
So this box over here, you kind of have to push inwards a bit. There's not a good grip over there, which isn't the best, but I, I can deal with it. Okay, let's go ahead and see what else we have. We have some dice, which are basically, you know, dice. No magical mystery over there. They roll dice. You ideally want them to be crits, but you can make do without them if they're not. We have some uh, standee tokens over here. What do we have? What do we have? We have our cards. We have some cards over here. Pippin Milfrog over there. Let's go through some of these. Let's actually go through it. We have some tokens, so I'm not going to bother going through because they don't really matter that much. We have these. I'm assuming these are for if you choose to go the stand D route because one of the things they did, I have to double check what goes on here, but they originally gave a stand D copy out to reviewers, uh, to people covering the game. But then, but then a lot of people wanted the standee version. So they couldn't really offer a standee version of the game, at least not in this campaign, but people wanted the color, so they did is they gave standees as a freebie to people. So we have just our little dividers over here, nothing fancy over here. Uh, and in general, the Towns of Tussle, like I said already, it's a boss battling game. You fight against four bosses, you, four bosses, not bosses. You fight against four bosses. As you go through it, you pick up your hero, your character, the special advantages, uh, then you take your turns, moving around, spending your, what's it called again? Spending your... Uh, health, movement, moxie. Moxie, I think it was. I think moxie was your actions, if I recall correctly. We have health, movement, moxie, and accuracy. I don't remember exactly. Okay, so we have over here some boss cards, or whatever these are. The Pundits, Samuel Strawman, Umbrella. Yeah, these are definitely boss cards. I don't know the exact relevance of them, but they're something there. We have Hansi, Penny Pinchetti. Oh my gosh, Penny Pinchetti was the worst to fight against. She literally sat there throwing... Oh, these are dividers. These are dividers, it looks like. Uh, Penny Pinchetti sat there throwing throwing coins across the map trying to distract you, and it was very intense to play against. The bosses are so different. But, again, you have a bunch of bosses you're fighting through. You have this little tray over here. Don't know what that's for. We'll come back to it. You have a bunch of bosses you're fighting. Uh, four bosses uh, across an escalating level of difficulty. You're going to be acquiring gear along the way. It sort of has a semi-cooperative aspect to it, which I don't typically appreciate. I will say, in this game, I don't appreciate it either, but I just choose to not really play with it in a way that inhibits my gameplay. Meaning, this is an aspect of, we're all on the same team trying to fight the boss now, but then I can take a piece of gear that you wanted. Rather than cooperating, I can steal from you. I can strap a piece of dynamite to your leg and send you closer to the boss where you'll get hurt, but so will the boss. It has this aspect of, feels very, what's the word for it? It feels very, um, like, Three Stooges almost, like, working together, or, or like, uh, cartoonish when we're trying to do things together, but blowing people up along the way. I, I don't think it actually minded, because I find that when we play the game, when we played the prototype back in the day, we did it in a way that worked well, that we were all playing the same game, going with the same goal, but then, yes, doing for some of these fun things along the way. I think it could be problematic if you lean too heavily into the competitive aspect. If you do it kind of more in the spirit of good fun, like, oh, I'm going to snatch that thing from you, oh, I'm going to strap that... Dynamite to your leg. If you lean into it thematically, it's fun. If you try to do it strategically, I think it's not the way I'd play the game. So, you have our bosses over here. These are the bosses. You can see these are the stats in terms of how you adjust them for their difficulty, depending on the first, second, third, or fourth boss you're fighting. These are the difficulty scaling in terms of their movement and health, depending on the difficulty. And then just general stats around them. And then if they are the final boss, then they have their own specific board. So every boss has their own specific side just for the final boss. Now, I'm not going to read all the flavor text here. There's a lot going on. We have Umbrella as the mayor of a neighboring town by the name of Sprinkle Falls. It says, won't read, read flavor text, then proceeds to read flavor text. I said I won't read all the flavor text. But, like, I mean, the, the thematic... I mean, this game looks so... It's so pretty. It's so pretty to look at. In a, in a morbid way, if you like this style of art. If you like this kind of thing over here that you can see on Cuphead, you can see it on a Cup of the Dice game. There's another game that has it. Um, oh, 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 what's it called? Um, uh, Vagrant Song. Vagrant Song, Cuphead, and Houndsfuck Tussle are the three games I know of that have this art style. And I, I love it. I love it. Cool. That's these over here. Let's go ahead and put you back in the box like so. I think you want it like this. See, the good news, if I ever forget what happened, I do have the first half of this video to remind me, to literally look back on and remind me. But I'd rather not forget here. So, why am I not feeling well? So, um, yesterday, I got my booster. I've gotten both doses, and I got my booster yesterday because uh, I want to get around to that. The problem with that is the booster, if you don't know, depending on who you are, you have different levels of adverse reaction to it. I am not that bad. I wasn't in bed all day yesterday or today. I'm totally fine. But I'm definitely a bit under. I'm definitely a bit drained, tired. I, I had, like, some buzzing in my ear. It just feels like uh, my kids were making noise upstairs. And, like, it just, it really, like, I just got to me. Usually it doesn't get to me. Usually I'm like, hey, live and let live. Enjoy life. Do whatever you need to do. Like, oh, no, there's some noise. Okay, fine. Like, it's not a big deal. But when I'm not feeling well, sometimes these things can bother me a bit more. So I was, like, literally, I was like, I'm just going to take a break. I'm going to head upstairs, take a shower, just completely seclude myself. Then when I was done with my shower, I came down here to do this unboxing. It's just, like... 
again, just trying to separate myself from the noise and the overwhelmingness while I'm under the weather. Usually, if I'm feeling fine, things don't really get to me. Here are the heroes we have. We have Yancey Plover, we have Henlo, Henlo Bulwark, we have George Irongut, Georgie Irongut, we have the Blopsy Twins, we have Norman Fishboy, we have Granny Melba, and we have Quintus Bunch. And these are the various characters you can fight out. We have the double layer player boards. I don't believe I have... Maybe I have that? I don't remember. I sent my prototype on a long time ago. I haven't been able to play this in a while. I sent it to a man vs. Meeple, if I recall correctly. So, this goes over here. I don't know where any of this stuff goes. This, I recall, went over here like so. This goes... Let's show you. This goes over here like so. This goes like here, like so. This should really be underneath this on this side. Yeah, you see? I'm already messing this up. This goes underneath on this side over here. So we can put that over here like that, and then we put everything down on top of it. So, there we go. Just in case you want to see how it goes back. Although, understand that I haven't actually done parts of the game yet, because we still have to deal with, uh, well, parts of the game. So, let's go ahead and continue this. We have our sideboard over here. This is our market board, where you can actually sit there and buy your resources. You can have all the resources, your town phase, you know, draw back up to three feet, resolve town events, shop here, and enter the fight phase. So you can have all these cards over here that you're going to be buying. That's going to be your market board. And then you have the actual fight board. Now this was, by the way, if I had to do a... That's actually a good video. I should do this, although I don't actually have all the prototypes. But if I had to do a video on, like, the 10 best prototypes I've ever received, just in terms of sheer quality of the components, Townsfolk Hustle would likely be number one on the list. Uh, it just... Let me see if I can zoom the camera out here. There we go. Townsfolk Hustle was... I mean, the, the final copy to what we have here, the difference is miniatures, primarily. I'm sure there's other things, I'm sure they've cleaned things up, but it's one of the best prototypes, if not the best prototype, I've ever received. We have our tracking the four stats over here, we have the buying and beating order over here, which is the order you can buy things in, the order you take your turns, when you get to the towns phase. What else we have? I feel like something else over here. This? Oh yeah, we have the fight phase. Yeah, this goes to the fight phase where you manage. When you're in the fight phase, you're going to go ahead and track the rough and movement, the rough and health, the various breakpoints, 18, 12, 7, and 4. At breakpoints, they take extra turns effectively. They act out of order. And they have to be, you have to balance that. You have to be mindful of your turn orders you go through them. We have the general fight phase. I don't think there's anything on this side over here. Nope, nothing on that side. But we could go ahead and close that up. And you know what? Let's go ahead and leave this out. Let's leave this out. No reason not to leave it out. So, could we still have more stuff to go through? Although, let's zoom in a drop again. We have the terrain cards. We'll go over here. Let's zoom in a drop and push this up a bit. Okay, maybe zoom in a bot. I, I want to see, like when I do the miniatures, I want that to be zoomed in properly. Okay, so we have various terrain effects. You can slap these out over here. Nice quality punch board, does the job. We can put this river down across some area. And every time you have a terrain card, you're going to put the matching terrain effect over here. So you can manage the fact that there's a, like I remember one of the scenarios had like the river like this, if I recall correctly. And we had the old, you know, car over here, which can zoom that way. And then you have a, Various other things. I don't remember what you have at any given thing. I feel like there's a forest over here. Let me see. Let's, I'm not going to punch this all out now. I don't want to do that. But I believe there was a forest that I can put down over here, if I recall correctly. Was it a forest? Here we go. You see, I knew there was a forest. So there's like a forest over here. This is a while ago. This was like, there was a forest here. Maybe it was two apart. I don't remember. See, now I kind of want to find it. I think it's done on a scenario card. It's not done from the back of the rule book. Here's our, here's our punch boards. Here's our little standees. So, these are the standees you got in the original copy. So, people who want, like, colored prototypes, if you wanted the art because you didn't want to paint it, you get the front and back of the miniature, and you have all this on all of these. So, people who wanted to play with colored standees instead of playing with miniatures, people, I mean, heck, you could sell your miniatures. If you're that kind of person, if you prefer these, you can probably sell your miniatures to someone else and just play with a standee version. Now, this, by the way, this will be coming back to Kickstarter. In case you're wondering, I mean, GameFound or Kickstarter, I assume Kickstarter, but who really knows? They, by the way, they, they launched a project, you know, last year. They delivered it already. Amazing job there. So they already hit Kickstarter's terms of rules as far as launching a second campaign. So again, we have all these different component pieces. There's another one where you have to, like, knock on the barn door, and if you, depending on what you roll, you the guy shoots you with a shotgun or something. I, just, I remember all the general ideas of stuff, but I'll punch all that stuff later. But, yeah, they're going to be coming back to Kickstarter with um with new expansions so in case you're interested in this game you can either pick up on the second hand market you already have it possibly or you can go ahead and head on over to kickstarter come you know some point 2022 and get your hands on a copy there's gonna be it's gonna be two expansions possibly more we'll see two expansions and come back to kickstarter we have the massive item decks we haven't even gone to the ministers yet we're ignoring the ministers for right now i'm trying to remember where the scenario setup is I think it was from cards, wasn't it? I think, maybe I'm not. Maybe it's from the rules. I don't think so. I think it was from cards. I think you go through the scenario based on drawing a card. It's been a while. 
final fight. No, you see, this doesn't tell you scenarios. This just gives you all of that. It had to have been cards. So, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have. We have these cards over here. The crit card. Let's see if we can pull this off. I always hate these because, like, in theory, these things give you a little pull tab. In practice, I find my knife is often more helpful. Okay, there we go. I'm going to punch that and put that on the floor. So, yeah, so now back to my uh, booster situation. Uh, I got my booster. Feeling fine-ish. It should be, should be fine. We'll be sitting down and watching uh, The Wheel of Time tonight. The first episode of The Wheel of Time. We have not watched that yet. We're in the middle of The Witcher Season 2, which we've watched The Witcher Season 1. We're watching Season 2. We're actually in the middle of way too many TV shows, honestly. So, here's your little crit card. And then we just have various uh, various card effects. These are the boss, boss behavior cards. So, each boss has their own little behavior card of how they work. So, you can target who it targets, how it behaves. And you're going through this boss behavior deck trying to figure out how each boss is going to act. And yes, as you learn each boss, there is a degree of understanding how different ones work, how uh, Will Barlow works, and what they're going to do to be as threatening as possible. So you do want to get to know those bosses, not because you want to get to know those bosses, but because it will be helpful for you to get to know those bosses. I think this is another uh, behavior deck for bosses, so no locations yet. Again, I'm trying to remember how you... I think it's you set it up based on cards. We're going we're gonna to find out soon enough, because I'm going to go through all the cards here. Not like every single last one, but the general idea of it. So, we're going to go through these. We have more cards, more cards, more bosses. Nothing else changing there, just more bosses. All that over here. Now, I can't remember if this fits sleeves cards. I cannot remember that. Hopefully it does. It looks like there's enough gap and room for it, but you never really know. Okay. And I know it's one of those things in general. Uh, the balance of sleeve cards is always like, hey, if you want to fit sleeve cards, first of all, you have to technically account for it premium sleeves as well, because otherwise you're making an even smaller subset of the subset subset of the population happy. If you only account for if you count for no sleeves, then you're not making sleevers happy. If you account for sleeves but only standard sleeves, well, then you're accounting for you only help uh, making some population happy. So really, you probably want to go for premium sleeves or no sleeves at all. And the problem with going for premium sleeves is suddenly you have a whole lot of empty space, empty space that. You could fill it with a foam thingy, but I mean, space is expensive. Managing space and what goes things, what goes in different places. So here we go. Here are the various uh, uh, scenario cards. They're not the behavior, the train cards. So the buzzing hive, the murky moat, the wooden fence, and all, 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 all of that. Like how it works can only be passed over via the bridge. So you can't pass over that otherwise. When standing on the bridge, you have two mocks, and you can pull the plug, and then you can drain the water. So you have all these different options, little thematic aspects of, you know, what doors you're knocking on, what your dynamite you're detonating, all things like that. Then we have the abandoned farm. Okay, that is uh, that is just in a town event. So, oh yeah, we have a giant stack of town events, which these are fun for a variety of reasons. First of all, just a lot of them have solid art. I remember they added that during the campaign. And then secondly is dying gift. You found a town. Oh my gosh, there's gonna be more of it. Minor spoilers, I guess. You find a townsfolk chopped and sliced in half. With his last bit of strength, he hands you a piece of paper and whispers, "Please utilize this fantastic deal. You receive a buy one get one coupon." That's insane. Keep this card in front of you. The next time you purchase an item, you can pick an additional item of equal or lesser value for free than discard this card. They have that kind of morbid humor. Sliced in half, handing you a coupon. But, I mean, that coupon could get you extra gear, which could be a huge thing. So, giant event deck full of town events. Am I, like, losing my mind? Like, how did you build out... How did you build out this scenario? Was it always based on the villain? Was it based on the villain? Maybe, maybe it was just based on the villains... Maybe you just did it that way. I'm thinking, I'm, let's, we'll come back to it soon. It could be that you just did it based on the villains and you only looked at the text for Final Fight, but the actual villain thing was per villain. I wonder if that was it. Because I might have just been focusing too heavily on the Final Fight aspect of what goes on there. So, let's go ahead and do this. Although I like the idea of the maps being variable and not being locked to a boss. Although from a balance stance, I guess the truth is lots of the bosses had things on them that said things like, move to here or do this, so maybe you needed certain things in play. Here are all the items you have. So, you can get all these, oh, these are the feats. These are the feats, I think. Are they called feats or whatever they're called? But these give you different options to go for. You can you can have three at any given time, if I recall correctly. You have the option to discard and draw new ones. And they'll give you money or or boons in the effect, as well as different points. Points can be relevant for the final round, for whoever's the sheriff. Masochist. Take two damage from a, take damage from a train piece, willingly or unwillingly. <laughs> Sturdy and simple. Complete a fight with starting weapon equipped the entire time. Well, that's a great early game feat, not as great late game. Lord of the Landscape. Enter every terrain feature currently on the landscape. That you see, like these can be like fun little things that are. This is such a good game. This is such a good game. My biggest critique of it was the fact that I didn't enjoy playing this game solo. It's not designed as a solo game, to be clear. You could play it solo, and I'm sure people would enjoy it solo. I did not. To me, half the fun of this game is the humor aspect of it. Like it's just a funny game. Like it's just a. It is both strategic, but also just crazy. And the crazy elements of it are just better designed, better enjoyed with other other people at the table. So that's my one major critique of it. 
which means I have to play this with like, I want to say three plus is the sweet spot. Even at two, it's not as ideal, at least not for me. Three and onesie. <laughs> like we have his chest gear, three and onesie. Plus one max HP, plus one movement, plus one mox. Cost 12 money. We have the, oh my gosh, I want to find like different options here. Like we have the, the lucky coin, we have the sharpened feather. You know, uh, we have a melee, one-handed dagger, cost, it can be plus two accuracy, plus one damage, not plus one damage, one damage. We have the courier pigeon. You may draw an additional town event card during each town phase. That gives you a lot of potential flexibility. That could be huge. We have the exploding cigar. You see, it really leans heavily into that theme. If a rough in action would cause you to unequip or discard a piece of gear, you may discard this instead. If you do, the rough and takes three damage. Like, these are just amazingly fun. We have the hats, the keys, the Rockville jacket, the Virginia's locket, the Queen's Claymore, Royal Mantle, the Sure Shooter. Like, look at the art in this. The art is just fantastic. Two mocks, zero accuracy, one damage. Range four. Penny's Ledger, Oversized Gloves. Oh, these are the boss gear. Oh, this is the boss gear. That's what it was. Yeah, because whenever you defeat the, the boss, you get uh, the Ruffin. You, do, you get basically gear from them. Then we have the Smelly Bait over here, and all of this stuff here. Yep, lots and lots of cards. We've got one more deck of cards to go through, and then we are done-ish, maybe? Done-ish. Well, we have the miniatures. The miniatures, I forgot the miniatures. We still want to do the miniatures. So, and the miniatures, I mean, I can't wait to see paintings, uh, not paintings, pictures of what people painted on the miniatures, because that would be, like, this is a game that you can do a lot of stuff with. If you're a good painter, I'm not. I'm a tolerable painter at best, which means I'm not here for the creative stuff. I'm here for the, hey, I can sort of paint the general colors you want on smaller miniatures. Large miniatures are harder. A lot more work in there. Lots more, a lot less room for error. Okay, we have the more starting gear. We have this stuff over here, special gear, sugar sack, slingshot. We have the hand cannon, the rope whip, the extendo pole. This is the one I always loved. When equipped, your other weapons have plus five range. Basically, you can use a melee weapon together with the extendo pole to get more range. But it takes up an equipment, so yeah, like you, you are equipping it. You have to balance that. These are so much fun. This 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 game is, like, it's just so whimsical. So whimsical, in a good way. I haven't used whimsical in a while. For a while there, I was uh, very emotionally attached to the word whimsical. And now I've uh, tapered off a bit from it. So, let's put our dividers in, in here. This one over here. Oh, interesting. Interesting how this works. You see, some of these cards, it looks like they need to shift over there. Looks like, maybe. Because this doesn't fit otherwise. We have this going over here like so. Mm, does one fit in? Yeah, one fits in just fine. So I think it's just we don't have room for all of them, which means some of these have to be moved over here, where they actually kind of have space for them. This is a very... Nope, they don't have space for them there. I will figure this out later, because I don't know how this actually works. Let's go like this. I mean, we could kind of shove it. I'm going to put this in like this, and I will deal with it later. Cool. So that goes in there. We have our cards, cards, all in this box. These do fit in nicely over there. Perfect. And this will go back in the box, where first we're going to check... Well, you know, first let's do the miniatures, because we haven't done those yet. So, miniature time. I usually do them earlier. This is late in the video. So, Townsville Tussle. Townsville Tussle. Here we got the miniature tray of all the delightful miniatures that we do not have an option to see doing the, uh, well, previews and all that stuff. So, here we go. Just let's go ahead and show you some stuff. So, and like, I can understand why somebody would want the standee. I mean, the, the 3D aspect of this is absolutely amazing. These are really solid. But at the same time, I mean, the standee had the color. And so if you're not going to be a painter, if you're not going to be painting them, or if you're worried about the um, quality of your painting, then I can absolutely understand why somebody would prefer a standee. But these are so nice. They're like ridiculously nice miniatures. I mean, they're just like, these are all the characters you can have for good and bad. How does this go? This goes like this, maybe. I think it goes like that. Did I just put this, did I take it out wrong? Here we have a Penny, whatever her name is. Yeah. There we go. Like, she is just, again, every boss has such character to them. The way they play out. We have the dog. Look at this guy. Look at the Sheriff. What's his name? I don't remember his name. Look at his bugged out eyes. It's just these miniatures are insane as far as the quality. Then we have our, ourselves. We have the townsfolk themselves. All of our characters. I always like this guy. He's a little bit more, um, a little bit, a little, a little bit able to hold his own compared to the others. Who else do we have? We have, uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch here. I'm not showing them all. This guy's just bizarre with his tongue out of his stomach. Look at them. Let's go ahead and set some up on the minute, on the map over here. Okay, we got some on the map. You can take a look at the front angle. Granted, in theory, you only ever playing against one boss. I make no guarantees that I'll hold to that right now. Now, putting them back is going to be a bit frustrating. I wonder if... I would have loved to have a key, because putting these back in the box could be a bit frustrating. The good news is, at any point, come back to this video, and you can check how they fit in the box if you ever forget. 
or I'm sure there'll be other options, but let's go ahead and show you this person over here. I may have to come back to this video. So we have our, our people fighting against two bosses because the Blobsy twins, oh my gosh. So you're trying to navigate around the boss, factoring in where the boss is going to go, how they're going to move towards you and like get into your spot and then charge you and do whatever and then throw you across the river and teleport to the forest. They have all these rule cards around how they operate in any given situation. Again, granted, this is a very specific boss situation. Let's go ahead and put this all back and hopefully figure out where we put everything. That one came here. That one came here. That one came here. I think I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure maybe. Not certain. Ugh, I'm definitely not confident at all about any of where these people go. Now, I assume a lot of the uh, pieces, the carbon pieces, will go there, but we'll find out. I'll check. Maybe some cards go there. I wonder if card decks go there. That's possible. I'll figure it all out later. Let's just see if this fits on nicely. Oh, it actually looks like it fits on pretty easily. It's like you don't have to worry about exactly getting certain things right. That'll go on pretty nicely, which means it's time to put this all away. This is Townsville Tussle. This is a, a fun game. A game I'm excited to dive into again. A game that I, I need to sit down and play it. I, I, I assume I'll be playing with Quackalope. I know he liked it. I liked it. So that seems to be the obvious choice as far as who to play it with. But let's go ahead and see how this goes. Now let's take a look at this ma map setup because I do want to check this one over here. I recall the map setup being here. Not this one. Yeah, this one. You see, here we go. I mixed up two different maps. We have the barn here and we have that over there. Where's the forest one? There's a forest in the right corner in one of them. Nope, 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 nope. This one, maybe it's this one. This one had the force in my corner. We had the little picnic thing. Yeah, so we played against uh, these people. We played against Queen and Queen. King, Queen and Queen. I remember that. That was hilarious. Yep. And then we have these different maps over here. I, I think I played this one. I did not play this one. I did play this one. Pl I definitely played that one. That ditch over there where you keep searching for things. Oh my gosh, this is so this is so fun. Yeah, so it must be that the maps are based like that. That you play the maps at any given point, and the final fight was just the extra rules around that map, as opposed to the entire thing. Anyways, this is Tasmith Festival. Let's go ahead and put the card deck back. The box full of cards. This is a delightful game. If you missed it, again, coming back to Kickstarter, so you have time to pick up a copy. You should be fine there. It is... Yeah, this is one where I'm... It's weird, because I don't want to say you don't want to miss it. You could be totally fine with it. It may not be a game for you at all, in the slightest. But if you are, if you do want it, understand you don't have to pay the current scalper. Not scalper. Scalper is the wrong term. I don't like using the word scalper. You could get your hands on this without paying the current market value of the game. Uh, right now, people are selling this thing for much more than they paid for it. And honestly, I understand the people who want it and the people who want to pay for it. It's just a question of, do you want it enough to pay that premium now, or do you want to spend that same amount of money in, you know, whenever this comes back to Kickstarter, and basically get all the expansions and all that stuff as well for the same amount of money. That is a decision you can make for yourself. For me, I'm going to be sitting here playing this game. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Thanks for being here, and as always, have a good one.